While exploring an alley in his neighborhood, 11-year-old Reuben Pedley has found an unusual-looking pocket watch and an old key carefully hidden long ago in a brick wall. Inside the watch's case is the inscription, Property of P. William Light. Reuben has shown it to a watch expert named Mrs. Genevieve, who believes that this is not an ordinary watch for telling time. She's told Reuben that a mysterious figure known as the Smoke, who secretly rules the city, has been trying to find this watch for many years. So the watch had a secret. All the way home, Reuben could think of nothing else, except, of course, the Smoke, thoughts of whom kept him glancing over his shoulder and quickening his pace. He took the stairs in his building at such a rate he was left gasping for breath as he staggered down the hallway to his apartment. Never had its musty, dusky interior felt so welcoming, nor had he ever been so quick to lock the door behind him. After wolfing down a hastily constructed sandwich and gulping milk from the carton, it was well past lunchtime now. Reuben hurried into his bedroom and opened his backpack. He was going to figure this out. In moments, he had the watch in his hand and an eye on his alarm clock. He wound up the watch. After 15 minutes, it stopped ticking. He tried again with the same result. A watch that had to be wound every 15 minutes was ridiculously impractical. So, of course, Mrs. Genevieve was right. The spring must have been designed for some other purpose. But what? And did the smoke know the secret? Was that why he wanted the watch so badly? Reuben felt a sudden need to double-check the lock on the apartment door. Hastily. If something happens hastily, it happens with great speed. He came back and dragged the old cardboard box of toys from his closet. He hadn't opened it even once since they moved here, but he was pretty sure he still had a wind-up toy robot. Sure enough, he found it at the bottom of the box, among a jumble of action figures. He wound it up and set it on the threadbare carpet. The robot managed a couple of awkward steps with its block-like feet before toppling over. Reuben remembered why he'd never been fond of this toy. It always ended up that way, with its feet churning uselessly, like a beetle on its back. His plan had been to pry it open and study how its spring mechanism worked. But as he dug through the box looking for something to use as a prying tool, he came upon an old jack-in-the-box and had a sudden inspiration. Mrs. Genevieve had seen no way to open the watch from the outside. But what if something made it open up from the inside? What if it was like the jack-in-the-box, which opened unpredictably when you turned its crank? Maybe there was something valuable inside the watch case, and the only way to get to it was to set the watch to a certain time and then wind it up, rather like the combination lock on a safe. Why not? The more Reuben thought about it, the more convinced he felt he was right. He jammed the cardboard box into the closet and sat down on his bed. Taking a breath to steady himself, his heart was racing now, Reuben eased the watch's winding key back up into its setting position and turned the hour hand from one o'clock to two o'clock. He pushed the key all the way in again and wound the watch. Then, tense with expectation, he pulled the key back up to allow the spring to unwind. Nothing happened. He held the watch to his ear and confirmed that it was ticking. Perhaps the secret mechanism would be triggered at some unpredictable point during the unwinding. And so Reuben stared at the watch in his hand, waiting. A minute passed, then two. He found himself growing more and more excited. He couldn't tear his eyes away. He hated even to blink for fear he'd miss something and he began to feel jittery and hot. The purpose of a jack-in-the-box, after all, 
is to fill you with mounting anticipation, the tension increasing second by second as you wait for that startling moment when the hidden figure pops up. And Reuben was waiting for something far more dramatic than a little clown puppet. By the time ten minutes had passed, the tension had grown almost unbearable. After fifteen, he felt ready to collapse. And indeed, when the watch stopped ticking, he sank back onto the bed with an exhausted and disappointed sigh. Ten more positions to try. What if nothing happened until the last attempt? He would have to endure over two hours of nerve-wracking waiting. And of course, it was possible that nothing would happen at all. Reuben didn't choose to believe that, however. He turned his head toward the wooden box sitting open on the bed. He gazed at the inscription inside the lid. Hey, Mr. Light, he mumbled. What's the secret? For he felt sure now that P. William Light had known it, whatever it was. But if the man's ghost was hanging around the watch, it certainly wasn't whispering any hints to Reuben. He was going to have to do this the hard way. He rolled onto his belly, set the watch to three o'clock, and tried again. Again, nothing happened. Fifteen minutes of pointless ticking, that was it. Reuben groaned and pressed his face into the mattress. By the time he'd tested all the positions through eleven o'clock, Reuben's eyes were bleary from staring, his entire body ached from the tension, and his hand was cramped from squeezing the watch too tightly. He hated to stop with only one position left to try, but he desperately needed a break. Returning the watch and key to their box, Reuben flopped over onto his back. Despite the mounting disappointments, he still felt strangely confident that he was right about the watch's secret, and he wondered what might be hidden inside it. He closed his eyes and imagined a tiny velvet pouch stuffed with diamonds, or rubies, something small but precious, something he could sell. His dream of riches wasn't over, he thought, not by a long shot. He woke to the sound of someone at the apartment door, a muffled thump, the scrape of a key. Reuben sat up with a gasp. He hadn't meant to fall asleep. What time was it? How long had he slept? His eyes shot to the alarm clock. Almost six. But it couldn't be his mom at the door. She had to work that evening. And yet, there was no mistaking the familiar squeak of the lock turning. Reuben leaped up, snatched the wooden box, and shoved it under his bed. He was groggy, disoriented, wondering if he should hide. He was still trying to decide, watching with dread through his bedroom doorway, when the apartment door swung open. Hey, kid, guess who's home? called a familiar voice, and Reuben almost collapsed with relief. His mom stepped in, closing the door with her foot. She had her purse slung over one shoulder, a larger handbag with her change of clothes in it over the other, and grocery sacks in both hands. She turned and saw him gaping at her. Oh, hey, change of plans. I'm off tonight. She cocked her head to the side. Reuben? Are you okay? Hello? Reuben snapped too and rushed to help her. Her forehead was beaded with sweat. She thanked him as he carried the grocery sacks into the kitchen. Whew, she breathed, letting her purse and handbag drop to the floor. She kicked her shoes off to complete the pile. Were you wondering why I didn't call from the market? Sorry, no, I just woke up, he said, hurrying back to lock the door. I guess I fell asleep. I mean, I know I did. I, I just didn't mean to. He shook his head. He still felt rattled from waking up in such a fright. Muffled. A muffled sound is quiet and hard to hear. Gaping. If you are gaping at something, you are staring at it. I'm sure you needed it, said his mom with a tired smile. As usual, she looked as if she could use a long nap herself. Well, I was afraid you'd worry when you didn't hear from me, but I was rushing to make the first bus. Otherwise, it would have been another half hour. She beckoned him over for a hug. 
I got asked to trade shifts. I'll have to work Saturday, but it's nice for tonight anyway, right? She kissed his head and walked into the kitchen. Sure, said Reuben, after a pause. He tried not to sound disappointed, but it had just occurred to him that now he was going to have to put off testing the watch. Beckoned. If someone beckoned you, she made a gesture for you to come near or follow. After dinner, his mom glanced at the clock and said that an old movie was about to come on. Look straight up silly, she said, but it might be fun. What do you think? Reuben's scalp tingled. Just like that, he had his opportunity. Do you care if I miss the start? Reuben asked. I kind of want to finish a book I'm reading. I only have a few pages left. It was a thin excuse, but plausible. He usually did have a book going. His mom patted his cheek. Go read. I'll fill you in. Reuben retreated to his room and closed the door. He found a library book he'd already finished, opened it to the last chapter, and laid it on his bed. Beyond the door, he could hear his mom switching on the television, then moving about the kitchen, pouring popcorn kernels into a pot. He knew he should wait until she went to bed, but it was the last test. He had to know. He got out the watch and key. From the television came the muffled sounds of movie dialogue. He heard his mom groaning at some feeble joke. He set the watch to 12 o'clock. Midnight, he whispered, and felt a shudder run through him. He had a sudden conviction that he ought to have tried the 12 o'clock setting first. Wasn't midnight always the magical hour? Then he had to laugh at himself. What was he expecting anyway? Certainly not magic. It wasn't as if he believed in fairy tales. Besides, he was thinking of 12 o'clock as midnight, but of course it could also be noon. Nonetheless, it was with a sense of powerful expectation that Reuben wound the watch. Moment of truth, he thought, easing the key out of its winding position. And everything went black. Reuben yelped. He thought he might throw up. He closed his eyes and opened them again and still saw nothing but darkness. He squeezed them tightly, opened them again. Nothing. His skin burned with panic. His mom knocked on the door. Reuben, are you okay? Feeble. Something that is feeble is weak. Shudder. A shudder is a shiver or trembling caused by fear. Conviction. A conviction is a strong belief or certainty. Reuben looked toward the door but saw nothing. He opened his mouth to answer but found himself speechless with horror. The door opened. His mom's voice said, Reuben? Reuben? Then, to Reuben's even greater shock, her voice retreated. He heard her walking to the bathroom calling his name, then into her bedroom. He couldn't make sense of it, was still in too much of a panic to think. His thoughts were a terrifying jumble. It took him several seconds to remember the watch in his hand. The watch! He flung it down onto the bed as if it were a burning coal. The instant he did so, he could see again. His relief was so powerful that tears started to his eyes. He bent forward, covering his face with his hands, trying not to weep. For some sliver of awareness in him understood that he needed to protect this terrible secret, to keep it from his mom at all costs. Reuben? His mom was in the living room again. She sounded half concerned half suspicious, not alarmed, though. He had hidden from her too many times for her to be truly alarmed. I swear, if you jump out and scare me, I'm going to scream. You know you hate it when I scream. Reuben tossed a pillow over the watch, which he dared not touch. And in a faltering voice, he called out, In here. If he'd been thinking clearly, he would have waited until he'd composed himself. 
but he was too shaken up. All he knew was that he desperately wanted his mom to come back. When she appeared in the doorway, he threw his arms around her, burying his face against her chest. She held him tightly. Oh, honey, what's the matter? Are you okay? What happened? Reuben shook his head, not looking up. He had no idea what to say. I heard you cry out. I thought you'd seen a rat or something. Where were you? I looked in here and didn't see you. Faltering. Something that is faltering is hesitant and not confident. You did? Reuben said, utterly confused. But of course she had. He'd hurt her. Well, I just poked my head in, but you weren't on your bed. For a moment, Reuben felt as if his brain were out of focus. Suddenly, realization thundered inside his head. It crashed and hammered and pounded like a violent storm. She couldn't see you. She couldn't see you. She couldn't see you. I was under it, he muttered, trying, despite the crazy tumult in his mind, to think of an excuse. I was getting my book out from under it, and then I thought I saw something. Or, well, I thought I heard something, and then I looked over and thought I saw a person in my closet. You poor thing. Did you bang your head? His mom asked, gently feeling the crown of his skull for a bump. No, I'm fine. I just panicked, I guess. It was only my jacket. She winked. Just come out when you're ready, okay? He closed the door behind her. Then, as quietly as he could, he locked it. He stood with his hand on the doorknob, his mind still whirling. She hadn't seen him. She had looked at his bed and hadn't seen him sitting right there. He turned to look at the bed to see what she had seen, what she hadn't seen. It was impossible, but it had happened. He stood there, perfectly still, trying to think of what to do. His heartbeat was galloping. He had an idea and ran to his closet. Once again, he pulled out the box of toys. A few years earlier, his mom had given him a toy digital camera for Christmas. He had loved it at the time, though he was pretty sure it was a factory reject she'd gotten on deep discount. It took terrible photos, and you couldn't print them or anything. Only look at them on a miniature screen but it would serve his purpose now. In a moment, Reuben had the camera out. Was there any chance the batteries weren't dead? He pressed the pale green power button. The camera emitted a barely audible whine. The little display screen flickered on. Yes. Reuben went to the bed and uncovered the watch. A chill of dread ran through him, but he ignored it. He had to know. He held the camera out at arm's length, pointing it back at himself. Then he took a deep breath and reached for the watch. At the last instant, he closed his eyes. He wasn't sure why. Perhaps he felt it would be less frightening if he didn't actually experience that first moment of blindness. But even with his eyes closed, as soon as his fingers touched the watch, Reuben sensed the light beyond his eyelids being extinguished. The imperfect darkness was made perfect. He shuddered and snapped the picture. He opened his eyes onto blackness, then let go of the watch. Instantly, the room rematerialized around him, as if he'd thrown a switch. Wow, he whispered. And then again, Wow! Bracing himself, Reuben turned the camera around and looked at the display screen. There was his bed. There was his closet door. A little fuzzy, both of them, but clearly there. Reuben, however, was clearly not. Extinguished. A light that has been extinguished has stopped shining.